Gene Perryman, who is going to give us his take on using resin and wood. Gene? I come up with my own design, not using colored pencils, but using scrap of wood, which I seem to have quite a large amount. And I seem to be able to get quite a few of those. And that's what I'm going to show you today. You see they're all multi just like colored pencils. They go every which direction. There's no rhyme and reason. There's no pattern. There's no other thing. Sprinkle. First thing I start with is a piece of scrap wood. I don't know if any of you took read what I sent out, uh, so on and so forth. I start out with a piece. I like to use a little piece of two before. I turn a tin on the back side, halfway round it off. Make sure the face of it is back. I'll explain that in a minute. Turn it off good flat. Cream can works good. You can use a 16 ounce water bottle, you can use a peanut butter jar, whatever. A clear plastic works nice because when you pour it with resin, you can kind of see how far up into the jar resin has come. In a Pringle jar, you're making a guess at it. Take, you notice I've got a group in here. It's real shallow. I'm the wrong way on it. Yeah, it right in it. This way, because one thing, resin will see out of everywhere. You'll know if you can, right here, it's a small Come out the bottom. Resin will come out not. Trust me. <laughs> I've made enough of them to do it. I'm going to pass this around as I'm talking. This is one I've already done. You'll see my two by four, my tenant, so on and so forth. Notice it leaked. And it leaked. That's what the top of it looked like before I cut it off. Now you'll notice in the center. You see that? Put an X. And I'll explain that in a minute. This piece I put in the middle, I see. When you put this in the lathe, you pull your tail stock up and you center it in there. You're perfectly centered. Then you can turn whatever you want, whatever pattern you have. You can see right in the middle, I have marked off the center point. I start out with a piece of soft, like to use pine. It's just a piece of three quarter inch round or a three quarter inch pine. I square off one end. Now, if you've got this flat, you've got this square. I marked off the four sides. You set that on there, and you've got that center. In this case, I've got an old adjustable square. I can set it on there, bring it up, and it's set near square. I take just a drop of glue. Put on the corner. Can you see that? Yeah. I'll do it on the other. Come around to the other side, check to make sure it's still square. If you got the piece in the center flat or squared off, you got that flat, it's gonna set in there square. You can glue it up good. Center and screw it up. It's square. So now you can take your handy dandy Pringle, your little bottle. Um, peanut butter jar, whatever you have. This is my form that's going around that I use. It's in perfect. Plenty of room to play with. 
So whatever you're going to use, make sure that you've got, if you're going to need one bigger, just go to a bigger size. Now, it's basically in just to make sure it's an inch all the way around. You'll notice I use these a lot. These dirt sticks that you get from any coffee shop. Uh, I buy them off of Amazon for a thousand in a bag. Uh, somebody might accident, accidentally might recognize these or pieces I can't find a home for. For instance, I mean, here's a nice walnut. Got some nice grain on it, pretty walnut, but you notice it starts at zero to go to about a half inch. All I do with that, I'll cut it up into pieces. Some of it up here at the top end, I'll cut up, I'll use it in my bowls. Others, they'll end up in little pieces. Here's a piece of, um, looks like Osage orange, I think it is. That's what it looks like. I'll work this up and use what I can use out of it. So I used up all these pieces that I can. Here's some that the ends are ready. But the resin will go in all of this. Build it all. Okay. I'll start out with the biggest pieces that I have. Just like this. I'll drop some down. As long as I'm up above the top of that can, I know but this is higher than the, my um, than my form. So as long as this wood is above that can, I'm good. Try to mix up the colors. You can tell it's mash it around a little. See that one fell out. So we stuff in another. You got to leave a little. I think that's about it. Now, just in case, you know you've got that piece in the center glued down. It's glued to the waste block. It's not going to flow. But what I do, I suck them down a little bit closer. You'll notice that you can see how I bent the sticks in. After I started doing this, I have not had one to flow. They're there. It, it's not going to. Uh oh. Demo. Where did you come from? It's a demo. <laughs> oh, well. That's it. Now, if you didn't get the instructions, you just said I put. A coat, a bowl, or two rows, whatever you want to call it. Duct tape around the top. Why? Because none of us, not a one of us, it be, well, unless you use a plastic, 
it's going to figure out exactly how much resin is in this thing. So what I do, come up about half my tape. Go around it. Now, all I have to do is bring resin to the top of this. So when I mix my resin, make sure it's on there good and tight because it'll leak. I guarantee it. When you bring it up and you've got it up on the edge of your um, duct tape, you're good. You're done. And as you see that I pass around, you see what the top of it looks like. Now, you've noticed on that piece I cut off and I passed around, you'll see brass. Now you can take some brass in here now and shake it around and water. And some of it will spring down, a lot of it will end up on the bottom. Some of it will get stuck in, in place. On those blanks in around, you'll notice on the edge, not blanks, but the mill. You can see the brass. When you can mix up your resin, wait about two to three hours, about three hours is what it usually takes. And then you can take put some more on top of it and take a stir stick and go around and kind of get some of the cracks. And you can kind of watch it'll start to sink. If you put it earlier, it'll just sink to the bottom. It'll all be down here. Again, trust me. It'll all be bottom. This is all I use. I've got an old green cup that I don't know where it came up. It's got a little black. I keep forgetting. It's got a little black mark on it. To do a pepper mill that I fill resin and the hardener to that black mark and it all fills that full. But you can see you're not using that much resin to build a salt and pepper mill. You're not using tons of it. After I get done, after I fill that, kind of see what I'm at, let it kind of Pink down, go to, I think that's a one teaspoon. Yeah, one, yeah, one teaspoon. And I'll just mix up a one teaspoon at a time. And fill it until it to where I want it. Don't mix up another whole big batch. Or you better have someplace else for it to go. You can go to Home Depot. You can buy that. 24 bucks. Give or take a couple of cents. Plus tax. I like this. It turns real nice. It cuts real nice. Now, Home Depot also sells this brand. It's called Fumble Wood. F-A-M-O-W-O-D. I don't like it. This is almost like a crystal. It um, hardens real hard, which is nice. But when you turn it, it has a tendency to. It's like two dollars cheaper, but it will chip. Just like the piece I'm going to show you over there. Probably this one pour will do the whole bottom of the bowl. Another pepper mill design. That my R and D department likes real well. Can you see that? Like that design real well. More. 
pieces of work. Again, I start out with a soft piece of three quarter inch air wood. If you take and look, which is basically gone, was a piece down the center of this. If you'll sit and think, if that's three quarters of an inch, hole at the top of I'm sorry. I'm not good at doing this backwards. Oh, at the top up here is 21.32. That's short of just 3.30 seconds. Help me out, Robert. 3.30 seconds short of three quarters. 21.30 seconds. Yeah. So you're not going to have any of this left. And by the time you put the top on, it disappears. You could go down to five eighths, that's fine. It's just that it's three quarters of an inch thick, so just cut three quarters off and you got you got it done. To make this piece, I'm gonna let this in where it's right there. That center. That center. I start out with when I was making that one, that one's glue, it's not resin. I would start out with take a piece of wood, and then I would take a piece and lay down on top of it, glue it on. In time, I would lay a piece up on top of it. On the other side, I'd glue it down. I'd have to let it set for a while. And I would sign, sand down the two edges. Now I've got that. I take a piece of wood and I up on the side. I do the same thing. Turn it over. Oh, set there. I lay a piece on top of it, lay a piece on the side. Now we keep building it out. Well, that takes me days, days, days. Now what I'm doing, basically the same thing. Take that four. Again, I take my handy dandy turf. I take a very small piece of it. I glue it on top of there. I glue it down there. Then I lay this piece on top of it. I do the same thing here. Get on there. You'll also know that I take and I put these at an angle. So when the rain comes down, mm -hmm. and it's not flat, doesn't collect any spot, doesn't collect. Doesn't make any bubbles. Doesn't make a air. Lay the piece on top of it. I do the same thing around it over and over and over. Put it inside of a screen. Of course, you're going to say, okay, square. I sand the corner down a little bit. And I keep building it out until it sits down in a really, really, really smooth. Now, what I have between these pieces, I've got. The thickness of a stir stick. When I fill that with resin with a little black in it, and try to take, and take um, to get the grass in it, then when I turn, that's what I have. Look like a piece going around, except now it'll have resin. In it. I can do this in less than a day and have it turn to mark. Where that one took me two or three days. To Letting the glue dry, sanding it down, letting the glue dry, working it down, so on and so forth. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm cutting my time from two or three days or a week to a half a day or a few hours and coming up with a product that seems to work for me. Yeah. So you've got multi colors. When you take and you do that pyramid type shape, it all it, it, it makes a, a variety of colors. 
Years ago, when I first came into the club, I remember going out to Ed Jones and I took and grabbed a piece of wood. Zip, 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 laid it out on a piece of tape, put some glue on it, rubbed it up. There was one over it, mental. Now, a lot of you do say mental. I come home, I made a lot of firewood. <laughs> a lot of firewood. Tried it, tried it, bought different pieces. Uh, went out and purchased a nice little tool to put on the side of my saw blade to get the right angle, did everything that I could think of. Uh, made more firewood. Then I came up with my design. And all of you have seen it. A few of, there's a couple of people in here have tried to make them. Think of, Jim still here? Yeah, I back there. Pull it towards you. He tried it, then he said something about my intelligence. <laughs> Or something, I forget just exactly how you put it. But anyway, you got to be something to do something like this. That's what the top of it looks like when it starts. There's no pattern. It's everything. I guess that's why Jim won't do it no more. What you can do with it. This bottom is made out of resin or put together with resin. I've made about probably a dozen of these holes like this, not with the uh, marble piece in the middle, but this size. And I've only made three of them using resin. Make a bottom would take me a week. This one took me about a half a day. I put it, turned it the next day. You can see how much time I've saved. This is one of my yarn bolts. I've changed the design a little bit. Used to have only yarn, now it's yarn and um, um, crochet. Well, another idea. Uh, another time out at Ed Jones. So I found out if I take a piece of, you know, every day you copper pipe, split it in half, heat it and take the intensity out of it, pound it out on the concrete, not on this one, this is too smooth, put it out on rough concrete, fix it all up, I can make it look pretty good. I started doing the bowls, so on and so forth. Oh, now we're focusing big time. And putting the resin in. Well, I like to take, make myself a back, back. No bottom. I got a plate with a tendon on it. I like once I get one, I like to say when I was using glue, I would put like two or three layers of new glue my pieces to it. I could take a chisel, chisel right off, and then split right off. So I did the same thing on my resin one. It was plywood. I think I took about three layers of plywood off. Resin so clear down into the plywood. So, okay, it was plywood. I go to a solid piece of wood. It did the same thing. So this went to solid wood. And right here, I have some material. This was left over when they worked on our house. I call it heavy paper. It's about the same thing that you find on the backside of a pad of paper. 
like real light cardboard, heavy paper, whatever you wish to call it, if you want to look at our passive count. I've got maybe 100 feet of this, so I'm using it. Um, I put it on the weight block, thought that'd do it. It soaked through that into the wood. So then I took it again, put a layer of glue on it, on my paper. Did exactly the same thing. Well, okay, the glue saw water saw you. I think resin just went right through it like it was not there. Here's one that I've got ready, and I've been using this for something else. I put there a layer on it. Now I can do this just like I've got one started here. Do whatever I want on here. Take a chisel, it lifts them right off. Works like a charm. The reason I say I've been using this is when you put the resin. You want this to be flat. But if you pour your resin, this is into one side or the other, especially if it's a big one, it's all going to run off whichever side is the lowest. Trust me. <laughs> you come back about an hour and it runs off the side of your work. <laughs> anyway. What I do is I can take, put this in the pipes kind of real lightly, lay the level on it, move it around until the thing is full, tighten those down real good. I always take and make sure these are flat on the bottom. Now I can lay that on there and it's flat because. I don't know if you can see them. these pieces aren't all the same size. You can't take and lay a level on here and try to get something flat. So if this piece is flat and you've got this square, now it's flat. It's level. You don't have to worry about all of these pieces being out of whack. Out of you know what I'm saying, different angles. Now, once, well, this is one I've already finished, and I did put the side on it. Normally, I wouldn't have done this, but I've done this so you can look at what the bottom looks like. I can take this now and take a chip, and it'll snap right off the wall block or the back block. This is the piece, this is glued on. If you look, you can still see the newspaper. When I take this home, put it on, run this edge down, this off, I'll glue it on to here. That'll be the next bolt. Here's something I'm trying. When you take, and you've noticed, I've already done most of this, I didn't think you wanted to sit here and you glue all these little pieces together. That'll work in your time and mine. And now I've taken the business off and I've rounded them off. Now, what I'll do is I'll take and I'll show you in a minute how I tape this off and then be ready to. So I got to thinking, why waste my time putting the tape on and in half the cases? So I've come up with design. And you'll notice I haven't did too much on this one because of. I don't know how it's going to work. This is a test piece. Round this off and round the inside off and just make it just as thin as I can make it. This is the design I'm on in the middle. The L for a light piece of wood, the rest of it is dark. And you can kind of see that'll be about the diameter. And when I'm done, which will be the diameter inside of here. And I'll take these pieces and lay them in there. Again, 
the piece of stir stick stuck between them. Now, if I have this done, I don't have to worry about taking duct tape and put around it because I built myself a dam. Now all I have to do is pour the center and it's done. Something I'm going to try. What I'm trying to do is to get you guys to think of something else to do, some other way of doing something. You know? And this is what this is what one of my rows looked like. That's how I pulled I put a row together like that in 10 minutes. Now, where can you see this good? Can you come a little bit? Ooh, not that much. Okay, this is the design that, like I said, I try to come up with something different every once in a while. Like that one I'm going to do that kind of looks like a checkerboard with light and dark pieces in it. Again, I'll take some, uh, I've got an old um, butcher block that's solid maple. I'll whack the pieces up into about three quarter inch high. And then I've got some old maple or uh, some old walnut and some other things, three or five pieces of um, zillion uh, cherry that was flooring. That's just right at three quarters of an inch. I'll just cut some squares out of it. And then I'll just set them together. And like I said, again, I'll set them so that they have, I don't know, I, I love stir sticks. I've got stuff on stir sticks. And I'll put that much gap between them. And I'll put the black dye, just enough black dye to color it. If you put too much black dye in that resin, it's not set up. You've got one heck of a mess. You might toss it in the trash. Trust me. <laughs> okay. This way is the best way to do it. Not a good way to do it. All right. A little piece of stir stick. I put it down pretty close to the bottom and I tack it on there. Just in glue, keep it from floating. I'll do one more. That's it. After this sets up a little bit, I'll take the bandsaw and cut it off. And then that way it looks like this, which I've already done. But anyway, <coughs> it'll end up looking close to like that. Like I said, I need to add a piece, which I can do that at home. Now, basically, right back up. I like to take. You see this area right there? I like to take the blue gun and go right on the edge and put a small and just kind of wipe it on there. Right there where that crack is, the gap is between the two pieces. And then it comes down to where the paper is. And then you have the wood below it. It'll seat between the tape and the wood are in to the paper. And then you'll have the same mess again. It's in the paper, in the wood, and then you're stuck again. So all I do is just put a real coat right along the edge. And it seals up those little that little area right there. Seemed to work for me. Throw a duct tape around it. Go along the edge of your backing plate. Match it down real good. I don't think you can see. It. You see that wrinkle right there? can. Take your glue gun. Don't put any glue in it. Just take it and run over it. It went right out. Now you maybe got rid of a leak. 
Any kind of little bump you see? Just use the edge of the glue gun and run along that edge or any little spot you see real lightly and it'll take out that. Take the edges, run down over the edge of the backing plate, wiping it down as you can. Yeah, you're going to see little wrinkles. Don't be too worried about these yet because you're going to have another piece of them. Wipe them down the best you can. That there. No, you don't. The second piece that you put on there. Flip your tape about halfway around the bottom and up the side. Bring it down over the backing, backing plate. Again, using this. It seems like it, um, a little bit of heat kind of melts it, but still. If you see a little wrinkle back there that just doesn't quite look right, just a little drop of hot glue on it. Like I said, if it's gonna find a place to be, it will do it, trust me. But if you take and you do this and you'll see it, well, you can see that pretty clear. You can just see how it moves it out with a little bit of heat, just a little bit of heat. And it just takes that and just smooths it out. Now, the last row I put on there, but it comes in handy. What do I do? I bring it up above my wood. Why? Because I'm not going to mix the exact amount. It gives me a little room. You can kind of see it, can't you? Yep. You see the little bit of area that's above it? It just gives you a little area so when you're pouring your resin in there, you mix too much, it's not going to flow over on your bench or over on the floor or all over everything. It's just a little bit of extra. Run it down real good, and you're good to go. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is what I've taken, like Ed Jones with signaling, uh, the other guy with copper, um, people from different things like uh, the row with just colored pencils. I've changed everything to work for me with what little bit of space I have, with the few tools I have, or the limited tools I have, and the limited space I have, whichever way you want to say it. And be able to make things like this. Uh, just like the people who are going to bring in, and told again, yeah, I'll come and watch, or I'll watch them, but it's not my, you see what I make? I make this, and then I turn the ugliest pieces of wood that I have. I've got a piece right now. I started to bring it, but I figured somebody like somebody over there would probably already want to be home. With it. But it should have signed it up on frequent fire models. But uh, it's just that's what I do, and I'm happy with it. A lot of you guys make. And I admit, you guys make beautiful pieces. You make absolutely beautiful pieces. Mr. Arlo, damn, you make beautiful pieces. This is what I do. Well, thank you, Gene. That's all I got.